X Hammer. I've been painting a lot, so that means I've been thinking a lot. And one thing I've been thinking about is that if you have a completed miniature on your shelf, you are, my friend, an artist of many mediums. I'd say you could go ahead and consider yourself that. There's so many mediums of art and, you know, creative brain power that goes into miniatures. And, you know, I'd say above all, my whole life I've been a storyteller, and I'm closing in on finishing a combat patrol of space marines. And I really wanted to give them a narrative, a story. I wanted to, you know, tell a story, and not only their story, but kind of weave my other Warhammer characters' stories into their narrative as well. And, you know, I was, I was finished with the combat patrol, and I had to base up the Impulsor, and it kind of provided a canvas, because I've been thinking of something that I want to show up, and mapping it out, and writing it up. And it's my own universe, my own planet in the Warhammer uh, universe called Penumbra. This planet gives me free range to create without conflicting with any existing Warhammer lore, and I, I figured I wanted a kind of a cold, shadowy, Cosmo, night, colorful, Norway meets Scotland, geothermal, Iceland type shadow realm with beast and lightning storms that somehow made plasma, and the plasma was a resource that fueled industry, and the industry built huge cities, cyber cities, that used the plasma and sold it and became rich, and the people became strong. And because of the shadows and lightning leaned into stealth and guerrilla tactics. It's starting to sound like Ravenguard might have some interest in this planet, being that Penumbra is also a synonym for shadow. We'll have plenty of time to dig into Penumbra later, but anyways, I wanted to base this Impulsor and do an interesting base that told a story as well, so I figured I would set the base in Penumbra. Why not? Pretty much all the bases that I had done for the Combat Patrol Space Marines were set in a winter setting, you know, like I, I kind of had this vision from the start. But with this one, since I had a little bit more room to play with on this big Impulsor base, I wanted to really do something kind of different and maybe a little bit more visually striking and kind of highlight some of the characteristics of Penumbra that I thought were cool like the lightning and the in the plasma and the you know the colors and stuff I was having some issues with the 3d printer so I'm back to playing with putty which is fun and I need to do it more often but I wanted to make some cool rock formation and I was thinking like what if I had like a plasma pool Perhaps like the plasma lightning in the geothermal mountains created some sort of plasma pool. Uh, and I like kind of was thinking of Iceland for in like inspiration, like the geothermal pools there. And we can have our impulsor like cruising past it, you know, just meow. All right, so we're confident about a rock formation, so we're gonna go ahead and glue it on there and I upgraded my super glue situation because I had such a rough time gluing um, you know my previous project together I was using the wrong super glue and it was like putting something together with maple syrup so you know the more you know now I'm just putting together like a rock formation like perhaps you know this is a rock pool that was formed by natural circumstances or perhaps unnatural circumstances who knows uh, but yeah and we're just mapping it out here to because remember we have to put a big piece of armor on this it's going to be the majority of the base will be covered up so something the small amount that is exposed needs to stand out and here we go this is what we came up with cool little rock pool you know i enjoy that now, that's gonna look cool for sure. It's definitely going above and beyond with basing, but I feel like we could push the, you know, push the envelope even further here. I think we need to add some detail and maybe some, you know, some blood or some heads. But before we can let the heads roll, let's lay down some astro granite. And that'll be the, uh, the surface of Penumbra.
Now, in the interest of narrative and creating a story on this base, you know, let's include some characters that we want to, you know, throw in the mix in Penumbra. I want to paint orcs, I want to paint Drakari, I want to paint Cadians, and I want to paint Space Marines. All of which are probably going to be entangled with one another, you know, uh, in the struggles of Penumbra. So, why don't I include a head of each on there? Now, this adds a layer of mystery, you know, like, why are these heads assembled here? Is it out of coincidence? Is there like a cult or is there some sort of beast raining havoc? And before we carry on, is this even going to work? Because we got to put, you know, like, are we going to be able to see the heads? And it looks like it, so onwards. The number surface is also black. So I got myself a little $16 nail polish stand off of Amazon. It came in two days and it's helped me organize my studio and give me eyes on like my whole range of colors you know and it just looks nice look at that under the lights it makes me feel proud looking at this penumbra has some nordic vibes so we're doing volcano snow but it's nice and dried up after uh, priming it and it's time to slap some paint on this thing and i'm excited where this is heading Here's what I'm gonna dry brush the base with and just kind of build like a little cosmic layer. Cosmic layer achieved. And this will look cool uh, under the Mordant Earth. So I'm gonna go ahead and base coat the heads. Color his hat. And I'm also base coating like underneath where I want to see like plasma crackles under the Mordant Earth. So. Kind of simultaneously here, did the mortar earth and painted up the faces, and here I am painting a Jakari face, or a head rather. I wanted these heads to look cold and dead, like they've been there for a little bit. Uh, but back to the mortar earth, so yeah, I wanted it to look like rock that had energy underneath it, you know, or maybe it was lava stuff, so went ahead and just slapped it on to the side there. See, so yeah, we're gonna slap it on there. And uh, later on, we'll wipe that off because we want the rocks to look like they're protruding out of the base. You know, we want to see the base. We want it to be nice and tidy. And I included some shells right there as another little Easter egg uh, to my last piece, which is a theme I'm going to try and keep up. And I noticed something about this colorway that I'm covering the mortar and earth up with. And it's something I believe I drew from childhood. And it's inspired from the Wildberry Pop-Tart. We're not gonna unpack this or dive much deeper into this, but I will say, if you pay attention while painting, you might unlock things from your childhood. And now we're gonna really kind of zone in and work on these individual faces and try and make them special, as special as I can with how tiny and, and little they are. And you know, also given the fact that they're gonna be kind of covered up by a huge piece of armor, but I've really found myself like really enjoying pushing myself to paint to a higher level every time. And you know, I, I like I said earlier in the video, I've just been thinking a lot about the hobby and you know, if you have a piece, if you have a miniature on your shelf that's finished and it's painted and it's based up, I feel like you can consider yourself like a sculptor, uh, a painter, you know, that character probably has some sort of story or lore, maybe you added on to it, maybe it has its own personal background that you came up with. You know, you're a storyteller too. You're, you know, maybe you sculpted some green stuff or sculpted some putty, you're, you're a sculptor, oh my god. Like, there's so many little mediums and so many things to this hobby that keep it so fun. And it's really hard to get bored. And um, with Warhammer, I'm really finding myself able to just let the let the leash off and let my imagination truly run wild sorry if i made your dogs bark <laughs> i'm a cat person and here i am talking to myself or perhaps mocha bean Who knows how these heads got here? Whether it was by coincidence, you know, or if there's some head rollers out there, or whether it was by a beast. Who knows, man? But we need some barbed wire. 
as with any good Warhammer little piece of roux. So we're gonna twist it up and um, like put you know some barbed wire around some of the heads would be a cool look, pretty gnarly and Warhammer esque and. Uh, you know, I definitely wanted the planet to have seen a lot of warfare, so it makes sense for uh, there to be barbed wire somewhere around the landscape outside of the city realm. Now we gotta get some snow in there. And I figured right here is a good placement for the snow because it'll be kind of tucked under the impulsor and will provide a good opportunity for some blood splatter. Given how bloody things have turned out to be at JPX Studios, I decided to go ahead and invest in some blood for the blood god. And we're just gonna go ahead and appease the blood lords and schlack it all over these rocks. Filmed my hand again for about 10 minutes. And here we, oh man, it's starting to look bloody. This is starting to look pretty, pretty sick and ancient and disturbing. I'm happy I found a hobby I can play with blood, and it sounds weird, but I have a thing for fake blood. When I was 19, I worked in a haunted house. I was a zombie, and I used to go to the blood room and get covered in fake blood, and, you know, it's just something I liked, and, uh, yeah. I always enjoy blood splatter trajectory in video games, you know, that's something I really love. I love detail, and I love, I, you know, this is really fun, so let's do some blood splatter of our own. up to interpretation what happened to this orc war boss as well something could have ripped its head off pretty recently hence the fresh blood splatter you know who knows what happened to it it's the moment that i've been patiently awaiting geothermal plasma pool time keep in mind that not all paints and epoxies will uh react well together so you should do a test batch if it's your first time mixing paint and epoxy but Mine is proven, good to go, and so I just mix up something that looks cool. I want it to be, you know, kind of murky and mystical, unknown of what it contains. And I drew, like I said, a lot of inspiration for those from those geothermal spa pools in Iceland that, um, you know, the, the people go to. And we liked it, we committed, we guided it on in there, and you can see from here that it just pops off. And it looks really cool. And that's that's pretty much all she wrote, man. So now I have to go chill and kind of let this cure and not touch it for a little while. Man, I really want to touch it and mess around with it, but I have to step off for a little bit. Okay, we're back. The epoxy is cured enough to where it's safe to handle. And man, this looks pretty cool. I have to say, this is probably one of the more complicated impulsor bases out there. Sealing that basin with some Abaddon Black, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much done. That's that's about all she wrote. And one thing about this, I'm really enjoying making these pieces on bases, and it's actually kind of familiar because I used to work in fine dining and was a chef for a long time. And uh, one thing you learn in the art of plating and things like that is negative space, and this reminds me kind of of how we would you know plate certain dishes or certain style of plating in fine dining restaurants where you use a lot of the plate as negative space and kind of cramp up on the edge into the the curve of the bowl or the plate or whatever it is um so that's pretty interesting kind of a, a cool comparison to make when looking at this and i kind of had that download while doing this piece and but enough about fine dining let's uh Let's glue this thing on and let's take it for a spin.
So now in creative hindsight, I'm looking back and I'm like, how could I cover up that little stand in there, maybe with good old Sterling Battlemire? But I'm not going to let perfect be the enemy of good. We're going to move on. I'm happy with this. It looks badass. And I had a killer time uh, working on this. I'd say we completed all the objectives of a JPX video. We used our imagination, we had fun, some bloody heads, and we got better. Mission complete! Thanks for watching guys. Remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a bunch. To all my subscribers, anybody who interacts, comments on a video, it means the world to me. This has breathed a whole new kind of fire into my life, man, and I, I can't tell you how much I look forward to making videos and doing this and, and growing as a hobbyist and as an artist. We're going to flush out and explore and develop Penumbra together. Expect a lot of drama and a lot of combat and crazy shit that's going to happen on that planet. Yeah, stay tuned for another video, and once again, thank you so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Hope you enjoyed it. What? What is this hell beast? Open fire!